Okay, before I get started, I've got a roll of Balin wire, side cutters, Lyman's pliers if you're an electrician, a tape measure, this hardware cloth I got at Lowe's. It's got half inch squares. And I'm gonna cut it in strips and I'm going to attach it to this wire that I've already got here. That's why I told you in a previous video that it really doesn't matter what you use on this, as long as it's solid, and this is. I used some old fencing that I had saved. And I'm gonna attach that with the baling wire and you know, make sure it's nice and sturdy and then I'll get started um, right here on the, I don't know if you can see it in the video, right here where all this concrete is, we had a few rains and it's got a little dirt on it. I'm gonna take a hose and spray all that off in a little bit before I get started with the concrete to make sure that I get a good bond. And then I'm going to start slapping concrete from this up underneath here and start building my way out. If you don't, if you live in the country or in town, and you don't keep a roll of baling wire around all the time, you're, you're doing yourself a huge injustice because you can literally, if you have baling wire and side cutters, a pair of channel locks and silicone and a roll of gray tape, you can fix darn near anything. So... I'm gonna get started doing this. I'll take a measurement from the bottom of the deck board to the ground and get a halfway measurement and I'll start cutting these in strips and wiring them up. So I may have failed to mention earlier, but I wanted you to get a look at how I got the footer and the wire in place. I hand dug an eight inch wide by eight inch deep furrow or footer in the ground and I put the fence long enough to reach the bottom of the ditch. I used fence staples to attach the wire to the bottom of the deck board and filled this ditch up with concrete making sure that I got it level with the dirt line and making sure that it penetrated through the wire and that I got total coverage on this footer for strength. I use standard ready mix, my old Harbor Freight mixer and my wheelbarrow and opted to wheel it around because I could get my tractor only so far through the gate. And then I shoveled it into the footer by hand. It's a little work, but it's not that big a deal. It's pretty easy to do and you can control the amount of mud that you put in the in the ditch as you go. I sped the process up to save you the, the headache of just watching me mundanely throw concrete in a ditch. And then I spread it out with uh, rubber gloves on my hands by hand. And of course, before I can start my project for the day, I have to take care of Tammy. And those bags of mulch were pretty heavy. So before I got started, I wheeled those around and strategically laid those out along the sidewalk where she could get to stuff pretty easily. Last load here and I'm Sure thankful that I was wearing my OSHA approved flip-flops, as you'll see. I sure hope this isn't an indicator of how the rest of my day is going to go. And now I start the tedious process of taking measurements. And I cut this uh, wire into usable, manageable sections. You get in the proper width and length. And I might have failed to mention that I had a pair of tin snips that I used to cut the wire. As you can get a, a bigger bite with each cut and it cuts a nice straight line, makes it really easy to work with. 
you will notice that <clears throat> when you cut these sections of wire they'll try to roll up on you so I take a little bit of extra time and try to bend them and straighten them out just to make them a little easier to work with so you're not feeling like you're fighting an anaconda the whole time that you're trying to work and then we get ripping I start by wiring the top of the the lath first and curl it down over itself to give me a little bit of a round edge at the top <clears throat> I use uh, the the wire that I had the baling wire I cut it in three inch sections and formed a little U and this twisted the wire here's a finished look at what I've got it's pretty sturdy nice and flat I think it'll make a, a, a easy base for me to lay my concrete on I did forget that I hadn't poured a footer underneath the porch ribbons so I opted to get, take care of that now and dug a small footer and mixed a couple of ready bag mixes in my wheelbarrow and threw that in and pushed this wire into that so that it would dry nice and solid. Now it's time to wash the footer, get all the debris and dirt and mud that had uh, found its way onto there from the previous rains that we had. It's, you need a nice clean working surface. So first I sprayed it off, tried to push everything off I could. Then for an extra added measure, I ran a broom over the top of it and kind of pushed the excess water away and got any of the rest of the grass, dirt, and leaves off the footer and we're ready to rock and roll at this point. My beautiful wife found her way out finally in her Daisy May overalls, a little cup of trail mix to snack on and she's getting started. That's one hard working gal right there. I got a few extra tools to bring out and I'll take one more look just to make sure she's okay and happy doing her thing and then finally I can get started doing my thing. We got our first wheelbarrow full of mud and we're ready to start. And by this time I had completely forgotten about the camera and its placement. And I was already in the zone and ready to go. So I apologize for not having a close up of what I'm doing right there. My next video I'll be doing much the same kind of work and you'll get a lot better um, teaching on actually how to get the mud on the wire but essentially you just take handfuls of that mud and you it's like battering a cake you rake it onto the wire using light pressure starting at the bottom and uh, smearing it towards the top um, don't be afraid to use large handfuls of mud because quite a bit of it is going to pooch through the half inch holes in the wire. That's what you want. That's how you get your bond. But you don't want to use such heavy pressure as to push all of the mud through. You've still got to get a coat of mud on the wire itself. I discovered that I had mixed my batch just a little on the wet side. So as an added FYI, you can take a little bit of sand and dry mortar mix together sprinkle that over what you've got and then mix it in really well and that'll thicken that up to where it's a little little easier to apply
once I got the, the uh, completed coverage on the this side of the deck, I go back over it with a four inch trowel doing the same motion going from bottom to top and pull the mud up with your trowel gently uh, from bottom to top just to smooth out as much of it as you can and get a nice flat easy working surface for your second coat. My next video will show a lot of detail on that. I kind of got caught in the moment and I was just going to town on this thing and forgot all about the camera. One rule that you've got to follow and never forget on a job like this, kiss your wife, tell her you love her, and tell her she's doing a great job. It makes everything so much better. Now here's a short glimpse of the finished version of the scratch coat itself. I've got it on there. I've got it troweled. It's not pretty. It doesn't have to be. But I got, you know, quite a bit of coverage. It doesn't hurt if you see places on yours where you can actually see the wire showing through because you're going to put a lot more on this later. But you need to give this first scratch coat at least 24 hours to dry before you start trying to put any more mud on there. Hey guys, it's Saturday, June the 11th. It's a little bit after 2. We had some major storms roll through. The last couple of days I had a roof leak. I'm waiting on an insurance adjuster and I'm waiting on a roofing company to come look at our roof. And while I was waiting on them, it started warming up. So I decided to go ahead and put a second coat of mud on the deck. I'm going to have to flip the camera around where you can see it. And this is the coat that you um, actually mark it in to look like rock. You'll see what I'm talking about when I flip it around. Hang tight. Okay, so I put another heavy coat on and I started scratching in the mortar lines to where it would look like rock. It's still just a little wet to do that. So when I get started here in a minute actually doing it, after the mud hardens up a little bit, I'll show you exactly my process for doing this. It's going to look pretty cool, I think, when we're done. Anyway. Stand by. So while I'm waiting on this stuff to uh, harden up enough to scratch my mortar lines in, along the bottom of this, I always go through here and I scratch everything back. And you're gonna have probably, well, I will anyway, probably half of a wheelbarrow full of crap to clean up when, when I'm done. But this gives you a nice clean edge. This is all going to be a flower bed. So I'm not really concerned about this. I go down through this whole line And I clean everything back. And I may even scratch a line in along here. But I kind of doubt it. Because this is all going to have cedar mulch flowers in it anyway. But I clean this up because I, I don't want to have to deal with this later. Alright. 
Nothing? Okay, so here we go again. We're gonna try to see if we can make this work. Just so you know, uh, this is what I use to put my mortar lines in, and that's nothing more than a piece of tin about three quarters of an inch wide. You bend it in a U shape. I took a hacksaw, cut this piece of a broomstick. I cut a slot in it, slid that in, and put a hose clamp around it. It works great. That's what Mr. Klesnikoff uses, and it works fine. When you get down here, where you're trying to scratch mortar lines in, and you just work it in like that. Take your time and be careful. Look at that. Beautiful. It, it does such a good job. And if you take your time with this, you can make this stuff look so realistic. I'm so glad I stumbled across his website or YouTube site. And I just take my time. Now, once you get these mortar lines cut in, I go, I let it sit a little longer and I go back over this with a dry brush. I've got this little brush right here. I usually use a little bigger one, but I'll use this today because my other ones are all used up. And you go back and brush these and soften these lines up. And it is amazing. It does a really, really good job. You don't have to go in super deep. I go in about a half inch or maybe a little more. And it turns out looking like rocks. And then if you choose to, you can take, I've got a little four inch trowel. You can go right here. You can cut a little bit of an edge off. So it gives the appearance of a, more like a, just a rough stone. I really like how that looks.
All right, guys. That's pretty much it. I'm going to let it sit there until it dries out a little bit. Go back over that with my paintbrush to soften the edges. And then it'll be time in a few days, throw some paint on it. Gonna look good.